Let's get into your pick. Your pick is Amazon, but it's not based on their cloud computing business or their e-commerce business, where they're, they're market leaders. You're more focused on their ad business that only generates under 10% of revenue. Why? Yeah, uh, that's a fair way to tee it up. And I think that's what makes Amazon so attractive. We're, we're focused primarily on the fact that Amazon Web Services kind of carries the water for the entire company. But I think what's buried under the surface there is that over the last five years, since 2019, uh, digital advertising has returned them something like 37% revenue growth a year over year, whereas AWS has only been about 27%. And so with margins estimated to be about 50% for both units, I think we should be paying a little bit more attention to the digital ad side of this business. All right, so you're paying attention to the digital ad side of it. Um, by the way, uh, shares pretty much doubling the S&P year to date, trades at four to three times. I know you don't always focus that much on valuation, but just something I want to mention to the audience. Um, you're focused on the ad business, but so are regulators in the EU. Uh, a lot of regulation risk from the Digital Markets Act. Also, Amazon last week losing a, a court battle specifically related to its online ad business. The judge said, <laughs> after ruling against Amazon, saying it could cause some serious and irreparable harm to that business. How concerned are you about regulation? I'm not super concerned about regulation simply because Amazon's not the biggest player in the space. And so I think they will go after them sort of as a basket. I think that it will make some uh, impact as far as Amazon is concerned globally. They're number three behind uh, Facebook and Google uh, globally, but they're also gaining share here in the U.S., which I think is really important. And so it's unlikely that our Justice Department is going to go after Amazon anytime soon as far as their ad sales are concerned. And that's where a significant portion of that ad buying is happening. All right. So you do have your eye on the regulation. I want to go to your under the radar pick. That's Fortinet. That's a cybersecurity player. You always uh, are very focused on cybersecurity when you come on the show. So you're being consistent. But I do want to talk to you. Uh, shares of Fortinet down more than 1% since Palo Alto reported its earnings. Palo Alto saying it's shifting towards platformization. You say Fortinet actually made that news a couple months ago, and it's set to benefit from that change now? Yeah, I think the call from Palo Alto to focus more on platformization actually retroactively helps uh, Fortinet's announcement in November that they wanted to shift the focus to going from on-premise to the cloud. They got whacked for that back then when they made the statement, but now that Palo Alto has made it clear that that's the only way to survive, I think what it did was help Fortinet become an attractive buying opportunity for a larger uh, company, with Fortinet doing something like, what, $5 billion or so. Uh, I think it helps to bring them into the ecosystem of someone like an Alphabet slash Google, for example, where they already have a working relationship to get access to their 180 or so points of presence. And so Fortinet suddenly becomes the way for anybody who needs that hardware set to get that uh, business sooner than having to go and try and build it because the hardware side of this business is way too complicated. So it sounds like you thought the whole platformization thing was already priced into the stock, but it's still negative since Palo Alto made that announcement, the whole sector under pressure. So you see that either turning around or the company being being bought, and that's where investors can make money. That's what makes this so under the radar. I think that the cybersecurity space hasn't been getting the respect that it deserves to this point. No surprise to anybody who's seen me on your show before. But I also believe that as we start to really take cybersecurity seriously and see it for what it is, it's a uh, necessary business unit in the tech stack. It's not a discretionary business unit whatsoever. And I think Fortinet is one of those companies that flies so far under the radar. There's lots of opportunities for investors who want to move into that name today. I'm actually watching it myself to see where okay. the, the most attractive entry point is.